How can Britain face up to international challenges like Russian intervention in Crimea without the political weight which comes from being part of the European Union? So political weight coming from the European Union. Nigel Farage. Uh, by not uh, becoming uh, a political union with an expansionist foreign policy uh, with an aim to militarise as quickly as they can. Indeed, Baroness Cathy Ashton, the British Commissioner, is pushing very hard for a European Air Force and for a series of drones. And if you actually look at what's happened uh, with the Ukraine, we've had a message that's been sent out now for 10 years, and this is not just the EU. Indeed, uh, David Cameron, uh, Nick Clegg, and, and I'm afraid Ed Miliband too, have all been saying to the Ukraine, look, why don't you come and join the European Union? While you're at it, why don't you join NATO too? And this is something that has been seen by Putin to be a deeply provocative act. We have given false hope to those Western Ukrainians. And did you see them with their EU flags and their banners? They actually toppled a democratically elected leader. Yes, I know Ukraine's corrupt. I know he wasn't perfect, but they toppled a leader. And I do not want to be part of an emerging expansionist EU foreign policy. I think it will be a danger to peace. Next slide. Well, I have to say, listening to that, it seems to me if I'm the leader of the party of in, Nigel Farage is the leader of Putin. And it's just extraordinary really? that his loathing of the European Union is so all-consuming that he is now seeking to justify and defend the actions of a man, Vladimir Putin, who, let's not, you know, let's, let's, Ukraine is one thing. Look what's happening in Syria. He is the only man on the planet who, with one telephone call, to, to President Assad, the most brutal dictator in the world, could actually help bring the participants to that awful, awful conflict to the negotiating table. There are 200 people dying in Syria, being mowed down in Syria, being killed in Syria every single day, and Nigel Farage says he admires, he admires the way that Vladimir Putin has played, as if it's a game, as if it's a game the terrible humanitarian catastrophe in Syria. He admires how Vladimir Putin has behaved there. That is why I think Nigel Farage's position is absolutely indefensible. Well, Nick, you, um, as Deputy Prime Minister, uh, were happy to go and bomb Libya. Uh, you did that, and three and a half years on, the situation in Libya is worse than it was. You were absolutely hell-bent on getting involved militarily in the war in Syria. And I, personally, am delighted we didn't go to war in Syria and we're not going to get involved, I hope, in military conflict in the Ukraine. The British people have had enough of endless foreign military interventions. The situation in the, in, in the Ukraine, in Syria, in Libya, these aren't simple black and white issues. And just to assume that if you support the rebels, you're supporting the good guys, frankly, flies the in point. the face That's of history. And that, we should not. That... We should not be intervening. And I am not. I don't admire Putin. What I said was he'd outwitted and outclassed you all over Syria. I also said I didn't like him as a human being and I wouldn't want to live in I'm Russia. Not, I'm not but asking, what I'm I want us to do, uh, let's not meddle. You, you did, let's not meddle. Not, let's, let's, hang on, just before you go yeah. on, you did actually say you admired him. As an the, operator, the not as a human being. The question was which current world leader do yeah. you most admire? As an operator, I would say Putin. Yes, and I then went on to say, David, that as a human being and with what he was doing, imprisoning journalists, I did not support the man. But can I just address Nick Clegg's point uh, about Putin could have made one telephone call to Assad and that would have stopped? Well, I think if Putin saying. had not pointed out that the use of sarin gas had not necessarily come from the Assad regime, if he hadn't done oh, that, I on. suspect the backbench rebels would not have defeated Nigel you, Farage, Nick, in stopping us President from going... So you wanted us to go to war again. I'm pleased no. that your backbenchers no. voted against you, and Putin... I don't like the man, All right, but Nick he Clegg, contributed to that debate. Nick Clegg, your turn. Listen, he... President Assad denied that chemical weapons existed. It now transpires that he had the largest stockpile of these abominable weapons anywhere on the planet. Now, let's be quite clear what Nigel Farage said. He said about Putin, the way he played the whole Syria thing, brilliant, as if it's a game. This isn't some sort of pub bar sort of discussion. This is a serious issue about how we stop the slaughter, the displacement of millions of people, women and children being sexually abused, terrible violence on an unimaginable scale, and all that Nigel Farage can say, all he can say is, it was, he's played it brilliantly. This is, a, this is an issue where, quite rightly, we in Britain, 
because we see this devastating humanitarian uh, crisis on our television screens. We want to work with others to do something about it. Nigel Farage doesn't no. want to work with the Americans. He doesn't want to work with the rest of no. Europe. He only wants to side with Vladimir Putin, who's the only no. man, as I say, with one telephone call, who could bring this bloody conflict so, to an end. So, Nick Clegg, sorry, uh, just, Nick Clegg, can you, can you come back to the question that Charles Hudson asked then? In what sense do we have political weight from being part of the European Union? And to what success in the Ukraine or Syria do you point that justifies it? Look, we are part in the European Union, uh, Charles asked the question, of what is the world's largest economy, right? 500 million people, shoppers, who can buy our goods, who can buy our services. But they don't only buy our goods and services, and contrary to what you just heard from Nigel Farage, we export 50% of the things we produce to the European Union. No, they only don't. export 8% to no, us. No. But crucially, they also <laughs> buy and sell as an economic superpower oh, dear, in dear, this dear. part of the world from Ukraine, from Russia, from the Middle East, from other parts of, the, of, of many countries uh, in our neck of the woods. So we have huge economic clout which of course Vladimir Putin, mm. which of course people in the Middle East will listen to. We don't have that if we are simply to isolate ourselves and cut ourselves off from our own European neighbours. 